This is the God of the Bible. Listen, God likes to confound the wise with foolish things. So that insufficiency, so-called insufficiency around you is actually a big opportunity for God to show forth his strength. I'm talking about the God of the Bible. Listen, 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 listen to me. You probably never thought about it this way. Just imagine that you were a Philistine and you knew that there was war going on, but you have a juggernaut in Goliath. Uh, he showed me nothing. <laughs> There's no social media, so you've not heard what... Welcome to the online church experience of Celebration Church International. Hi guys, my name is Mitchell and you are welcome to service. We are delighted to have you here and we trust you had an amazing week. If you did not, then you are about to have one now. This is another opportunity to experience God and fellowship with others. Before we commence, here are some information you should know. Hi, my name is Tomiwa. If you are joining us for the first time in service today, we are glad to have you fellowship with us. We would love for you to take it a step further by visiting the link you see on your screen now and fill in your details. We would reach out to you to get you better acquainted with us. Once again, we are delighted to have you. Thank you for joining in. I'm Bethel. Wondering how to keep the fire on your altar burning? We've got you covered. Triumph 30 Live is a non-denominational devotional platform. We pray daily by 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 8 p.m. WAT. We also pray by 9 p.m. EST for our North American brothers and sisters. It is our utmost pleasure to partner with you for your progress and joy in the faith. So do well to visit our website at ccing.org for resources that will help you maintain fervor. You can also check out the resources we have on Google, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. As service commences, here are some trusted tips that will help you benefit the most from it. Understand that you are a part of this service. You are not a mere viewer or observer. Please stand when it's time to stand, pray when it's time to pray, and sing when it is time to sing. You should also get your writing pads and your Bible. This will help you concentrate better. Also, you should maintain a posture that will help you concentrate. Avoid lying down on your bed so you don't fall asleep. And most importantly, invite your family and friends to be a part of this divine experience. And we know that as you participate, you will be transformed by this experience. On your mark, set, go! This is a success story. How we effectively evangelize and make disciples off and deploy people who once upon a time were mere seekers as mature disciples and vibrant ministers of the gospel. How we envision all men to celebrate endless life in Christ and lay the focus on him and his finished work, shifting our attention from ours to his. How we raise people of like passion whose heart beat for lost souls, people who labor in the word and prayer, whose feet run with the gospel in their hands like a raging inferno spreading like wildfire through the nations. How we seek to know Christ and Him alone crucified, building up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, releasing sweet smelling savor and worship like elixir for a ruptured soul, edified by the word of His grace and skilled in the word of righteousness, how we serve God by His Spirit, how we boast in Christ Jesus, put no confidence in the flesh, how we experience progress and joy in the faith. This is Celebration Church. We're in Christ, for Christ, with joy.
you are, lift your hands and bless the name of the one who keeps leading us. Hallelujah. Raise your hands wherever you are and bless the name of the one who leads us. He's ever present, leading us. Zubiri Bahandiri Bakaya. And I 
And I want us to pray with the knowledge of those who know that their prayers are effective. The Bible says the effectual and the fervent prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available and is dynamic in its working. Are we ready? We don't sound ready. Are we ready? The Bible speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 says, But thanks be unto God who in Christ always leads us in a triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of his knowledge of him everywhere and again in acts chapter 2 verse 42 the bible says and they devoted themselves to the apostles teachings and the fellowship 
to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Now, something awesome happened in the city of Elorin yesterday. Over the weekend. That's the rejoicing I want to hear. Now, there has been a shift. The apostolic visit was a remit. Stays rooted. Stays rooted and grounded in the word. Stays rooted and grounded in the word. Rapaka Sokotobalenama. Rika Sotebande. I want you to lift up your voices and thank the Lord. Rita Makasata. Oh, we thank you for the lives that have been changed. We thank you for the miracles that we have seen. We thank you. We thank you for the word of God rooted in the heart. Again, Ramakasata Balokosa, Embregetele Meketele Ma, Ripaka Bakasate, Ekoson Delemande, Remekete Belekele Makabai, Rakopoko Sokoto, Rika Badamanda. Hey, I want your voice of thanksgiving to be loud this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ebaka bakatonos. Embrena mendele kaya. Abaka sankete. Rima mama 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 kondes. Ezekedele megede. Remeka makasonte. Iba ba 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 ba. Mande kele koborono kos. Endele kendi alatandes. Ripa kopolo koboche. Rema nama 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 na. Ebaka baka balabadabas. Zika barana manda shaka, rika bolo kondes. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I can get a louder amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now we know that in our kingdom our talk is not cheap. When we say what we know that we are birthing things into reality. Now there might have been situations going around in the country that has made you feel distraught or unhappy. But our response to it is declaring the word of God and praying. The effectual and the fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much and makes power available dynamic in its working. So we are going to be declaring over Nigeria. And this is, this is our prayer. That from the north to the south and the east to the west we declare that every city every town every village remains conducive for the spread of the gospel christians all over remain safe to declare their faith boldly that nothing can stop the move of god in this country begin to declare that ramakate rebedes remember that your talk is not cheap remember that your talk is not cheap as you declare what we see things birthed into reality reno kose ebeketele makata ramaka bakasha kotobele rekesetele ma aiba kondes hekete kete remekambo loko shedeba eh baba baba rikata kata kata finally brothers pray for us that the word of the Lord has freaked us and is glorified even at this we see this is with you and pray that we be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men we declare a deliverance of from our brothers and sisters all over the country in the north in the south in the east in the west we are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men we are preserved the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord has freak us and is glorified. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord has freak us and is glorified. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord has freak us and is glorified. Nothing can stop this. Nothing can stop it. Nothing will hinder it. Makabaka telekose, eremeketele bakataya, rikobokonje, remekete bolokomoko son teleba, rabagata da da da, ripako poko telemonke, ripako shekete, mande, mandeka, elemegedele makaba, ramako soko polobos, ribadala ma, there is safety for Christians all over Nigeria. Safety for Christians all over Nigeria. The word of the Lord grows. Nothing can stop this move. No hostility can stop this move. We declare by faith that every part of this country stays conducive. Thank you, Daddy. Glory to your name, Daddy. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God.
Now I said earlier, our talk in our kingdom is not cheap. And we are about to do something which I call possibly my favorite part of the service where we are declaring words and saying things and shaping our lives and the atmosphere. Are we ready? So I want us to say with all favor and with gusto. Say, I declare that I am led of God. God loves me. He will lead me. In this month and beyond, I grow in the consciousness of his everlasting love. God speaks to me and I hear his voice. In this month and beyond, I grow in my discernment of his leading. God is working in me. Say it again. God is working me to will and to do of his good pleasure. Leading seeks me in every area of my life. I am at pace with God. I am in step with him. I am never too fast. I am never too slow. Never too early. Never too late. Always in the right place. At the right time. With the right people. Doing the right things. I am precise in purpose. In pursuits. In ministry. In my career. In my relationships. In every area. From the north to the south. And the east to the west. We declare. That every city. In Nigeria remains conducive for believers it is a difficult thing so it's a difficult thing to kick against the bricks so in this nation the gospel grows speedily and prevails now this is the last lap and I want you to say this one with so much strength because this is prophetic about what God is set to do through CCI Global are we ready now say CCI Global is an unstoppable force against the kingdom of darkness by the spirit of god we are taking the world for jesus we are taking the world for jesus a billion souls a billion souls in a thousand cities we are a formidable army of god and nothing nothing say nothing say me something nothing nothing can stop this move of god rejoice somebody Glory to God. Make some noise. Make some more noise. Celebration church. Glory. Glory. How many of you believe when God says a thing, it comes to pass? This morning, I want you to know that every word that has been pronounced over your life is coming to pass. Yes, sir. Uh, you won't have to wait too long. You won't have to wait too long. Yeah. Glory. Just lift up those hands and worship. Yeah. It's about to get rocky this morning. Come on. Hey.
true about you yes, say I am who you say I am I have what you say I have I can do what you say I can do speak in tongues right now speak in tongues right now speak in tongues 
I will never settle for less I know there's more that's found in you And we will never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you Sing it from your heart, say And we will never settle for less It's a pledge We know there's more that's found in you Wherever you are in this room, say we For you say you we will never we know it was good yesterday but the future is brighter we sapphire the part of the just as a shining light shines brighter and brighter sing from your heart say we we know Keep a higher We will, we will, we will never We know I want to hear the crowd Say we I'm ready for new frontiers to go to places I've never been before. Wherever you will, you will lead. I'm ready. Lift your hands, everybody, and say, We will. We know. I'm ready to listen to your voice. This is important for someone. Say we. We know. We know. Hey, hey. Say we, we. As a church and as individuals. Hey. We know. I will never settle for less. Lake Apari and the Ripahaya sing, I will never. I'm repeating this because it's a prophetic awakening for someone. This is not where God said you will stop. You are stopping halfway. Sing, I will never. It's time to forge ahead by the power of the Holy Ghost. Forge ahead by the power of the Holy Ghost. I will never, never settle for less. Hey, Akapaya. Thank you, Jesus. Not after 20 years, sharing testimonies from 20 years ago. I know there's more that's found. I will never sell for us. When the prophecy is struck the arrow on the ground. You won't stop after the third strike. I will never settle for less. 
because I know. I know there's more than Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to do something prophetic. I want you to thank God that his leading is never far from you. Can you do that? Do it from your spirit. Lord, I thank you. Your leading is never far from me. I enjoy divine guidance. I enjoy divine leading. I thank you. That's my life. Your leading is never far from me. Your leading is never... I enjoy divine leading. I enjoy divine guidance. I enjoy divine leading. I thank you. This is the story of my life. This is the testimony of my life. I enjoy it. I walk in it. This is my testimony. I thank you. I celebrate divine leading in my life. I celebrate divine leading in my life. I celebrate divine leading in my life. I always know what to do. I always know where to go. I always know. I do not walk in darkness. I do not walk in darkness. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. In my family, in my finances, in my ministry, I do not walk in darkness. I thank you. I thank you. Thank him from your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, we've been praying this this season. We will pray it one more time because some people need it. The Bible says that a righteous man sees trouble afar off and hides himself. Lord, in the name of Jesus, any error in my life or any error that I'm approaching, expose it for my protection. Begin to pray. Pray that from your heart. Pray that from your heart. You won't discover when it's too late. You won't discover 10 years after. Now, 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 now. Reveal and expose any error that I'm approaching. Help me not to call an enemy my friend. Help me not to call a friend my enemy. Help me to walk in discernment. If it is a character flaw that I need to correct, and people have been telling me and have been adamant, Lord, correct me. Expose it by your word. Not after there are so many casualties. Reveal it to me now, 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 now. Any way that you choose, through dreams, through visions, through confirmations, any way that you choose. Balero kapata sapale embele kapana kapano kutili pilia ruta kapano finei suvene no kutia shete sinama no kosa kinama no kapaya tapai supono kufana no kufinei shanama no kosiki se. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say this from your spirit. Say, we are a people of prophecy. Are you awake this morning? Say, we are a people of prophecy. Say the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Say, I've received righteousness through faith. Therefore, I declare that my steps are ordered. I do not walk in darkness. My steps are ordered. Say, in the name of Jesus, 
I have the ability to see trouble afar off. And I hide myself. I have the ability to see trouble afar off. And I hide myself. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Give him a shout. Rejoice. Thank you, Lord. To shout inside is always the win inside. If you are a victor, we will know it by your shouts. Rejoice in the Lord again. I say rejoice. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. How was your week? I mean, a lot of wonderful things happened last week. The last time this young man was in church, he was single. Now he's married. He's smiling the way we've not seen him smile before. Playing, he played from his spirits today. You know that? We are so happy for you. Congratulations. Is your wife here? Yeah. Wave at us. Welcome home. We love you. Now, wow, you don't use bass. Carry babe now. Yeah. You understand? Know you, you, you saw what I did there. You saw what I did there. It's, it's natural. The rhymes just say. Just... <laughs> Hallelujah. And we had such a great time at the Loring. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And we just thank God for the word prevailing. All right. Um, you may please be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, I just sense it. You see, some of us are so used to playing church that when God actually brings us a word that will change our lives, we don't sense it. We don't sense it. But the teaching series of this month has been carefully curated to change your life. And that's why in Celebration Church, it's not enough to just come first Sunday and third Sunday. Just come once in a while. We have a syllabus constantly. For instance, if we hear just this sermon, you've not heard everything. There are important things that we shared, you know, the first Sunday and then the second Sunday. And the whole thing is one message on divine leading. Please. I want to encourage you to be committed midweek services, all those things. Never get comfortable missing the assembly of the saints. Never get comfortable. Never get comfortable. If you get to a point where you miss service and you, you just feel normal, it's not right. And if you must miss service, stream. But also never get comfortable with the idea of simply streaming. Then I will just stream. As much as possible, always do your best to be present. Please, are you, are you listening to me? Yes. It's very important. You know, so, I mean, it's a crescendo. Next week, we're talking about divine leading through prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to be such a powerful service. Pastor Nathaniel Bassi will be with us. <laughs> Please invite your friends. Invite your family. Invite your enemies, your frenemies. You know, invite everybody because it's going to be explosive. Are you listening to me? All right, let's go into the teaching for today. First and foremost, you see, <laughs> it so happened that something very interesting happened today that might even be like a part of what I want to teach. And I'm just going to show it to you. Some people have different reactions to it. But I will tell you what happened to me. As you all know, I was in Ilori, you know, since Friday, preaching, long schedule. I came back. I got back into the house about 8.40 p.m. or something. And I just slept off. Because even prior to the Ilori, I, I mean, I had a very busy schedule generally, recently. Very, very busy. My wife knows I would like to pray and prepare. So she came into the room 
woke me up 5 a.m. She was in the study, you know, praying, preparing. You know, so she came into the room, woke me up 5 a.m. I woke up. You know that thing we do now. So I got up, you know, prayed a bit, and slept off. And, you know, I, I said to myself, if I'm going to sleep, I'm going to sleep just one more hour, I'll set my alarm. But for some reason, I was so tired, I didn't even set the alarm, and I just slept off. At exactly the time I was supposed to wake up, I started hearing knocks. This is interesting. Those of you who um, follow my teaching ministry know that I've shared a testimony before of a time I was supposed to be praying, you know, and I was also tired and I slept off and I, I heard alarm. And I woke up, check out, checked all the phones, and it was none of them. So, so this, this was not the first time. But this one happened in a very interesting way, seemingly natural way. I heard knocks. I, I woke up. First and foremost, that's a miracle. I'm a deep sleeper. So the fact that it woke me up, story for another day. I woke up. It was not the door. It was the window right over my head. Two things you must take note of. My room has about five windows, but this was the exact window just above my head. And this was the exact time I was supposed to wake up. And I opened the curtain to see. Media team, can you play? Do you have the video? Play, play, let them. Is it, is it playing? Is it up now? Some people said, because, you know, some people said, um, Birds always knock on the window. You know, they are fighting their reflection. I understand there is a natural side to it. But first and foremost, this has never happened to me before. I have never witnessed it happen in that house. It happened at the exact time. Okay, it's okay now. <laughs> you have turned it to soundtrack. <laughs> it happened at the exact time I was meant to wake up. Exact time. So, you know, I told someone just two weeks ago, interestingly, I said, when you talk about divine leading, I, I live like Bible days, I'm telling you. I live like Bible days. So many spectacular leadings, some of them I can't share. There are some things, if I tell you this happened, you will say, mm. <laughs> because I don't know. I remember... This particular thing has happened twice. During my IT, I, I did my IT with Julius Berger, and for some reason, my supervisor gave me his clutch pencil to do a particular project. I know this pencil was special, but he just gave special emphasis to that pencil and said, make sure you don't misplace it. I said, I've heard, sir. As I was about to collect it, he said, have you heard me? Ha. Huh. And maybe, maybe not. I thought the guy already had some beef for me anyway. So, you know, this was... And I tried to be careful with things like that. And then... Long story short, I misplaced it. How did I misplace it? You know, it dropped from my pocket. It dropped from... It dropped from my pocket or something like that, you know. I said, God. It's like this man knew I'm in trouble. What do I do? And I, just been, I, I had just been reading about, you know, angels and divine leading and stuff like that. So I just prayed from my heart. I wasn't even trying to be deep or spiritual. And I said, God, please. I don't know how you're going to do it. And honestly, I don't care. Please let me find this clutch pencil. In Jesus' name, amen. You know. Long story short, two days later, 
I'm dressing my bed. You need to dress your bed, people. Dress your bed, people. And I lift up a side, you know, to tuck it in very well. And right under the bed was the clutch pencil. Now, listen. I know where the pencil fell. Listen, I heard the sound. You know when something drops and you just be like, it's your mind. So it dropped in the bus stop. I know. <laughs> Ain't no way it's going to have been there. Now, and I've had many instances like that. However, for some of you, you're just wondering, well, I never really experienced things like this. So what, what does that say? Maybe God loves some people and he doesn't love some others. Or what, what, what does that mean? Because some of you have tried extraordinary things. Oh, maybe if I do this, I'll hear God in a spectacular way. And all the things you tried never worked out. And you're just wondering. For instance, when it comes to salvation, maybe you're tired of um, debating you know, the Bible with people. And you wish God would just appear to them. And solve all the debates. First and foremost, it can happen and it does happen. Come on, are you listening to me? But I will not be a pessimistic preacher if I told you that it won't always happen. It's not God's normal order. God has ordained for salvation to happen by the preaching of the gospel. It has to happen by the preaching of the gospel. And so, yeah, some people will have the soul experience. You are on your way to Damascus in rebellion and all of a sudden a bright line, light shines in your eyes, bright enough to make you blind indefinitely and to knock you off your horse. And then you hear an audible voice calling your name and saying, why are you persecuting me? Go into the city to be told you what you shall do. And maybe you're wondering, why wouldn't that happen? I want, to, I want to show you why. Paul told us why it happened to him. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. There's a huge lesson here. 1 Timothy chapter 1 from verse 15. Come on, are you there? It says, this is a faithful saying... And worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He says, listen, I know there are many sinners that you have found in the world. He says, I'm chief amongst them. And why did he call himself chief? In other instances and maybe in this, he called himself chief because he persecuted the church. A lot of people have done many horrible things, but the fact that I was instrumental to the killing of Stephen and to the arrest of many believers and the chief of sinners. Verse 16, everybody read verse 16 together, one, two, go. However, for this reason I have obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a what? Pattern to those who, we, who are going to believe in him for everlasting life. Listen, so now he says, what God did for me was not just for me. What God did for me was for everyone who will believe afterwards. God made it a pattern. So now, why does God give spectacular encounters to some people? So that by extension, by their miracle, it can be an evangelical medium to everyone else. Are you getting what I'm saying? So usually, more often than not, spectacular encounters are not for individuals alone. What God does to one, he does to all. And by their testimony, you're meant to change your perspective about God and receive that as something that God has said to you. For you to say it must happen to you, for you to believe it, that would be wrong. See what God did in others as a pattern. As an example for you to follow. Say loud amen if you are with me. It doesn't have to be spectacular for it to be spiritual. If you don't know this, in your quest to grow in discernment, you're going to suffer many things. Many false religions in this world started by spectacular encounters. Spectacular encounters. 
Go and read up, you know, how Seventh-day Adventists started and all these movements. They had a spectacular encounter. Someone they thought to be an angel said some things, instructed them to write some things. And at the end of the day, it was a perversion of the truth. Because you need to know that as much as we are charismatic people and spiritual people, spiritual experiences must be tested and interpreted peri pursue the word of God. Because even Satan can appear as an angel of light. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's very important. It doesn't have to be spectacular for it to be spiritual. Learn to accept and embrace the ways that God speaks to you. Let me, let me, let me tell you this. It is sin for God to speak to you in a way and for you to despise it because it's not spectacular enough for you. This great church is a move of God. It is visible to the blind and audible to the deaf that it's a move of God. At the same time, I never saw any vision. I woke up one morning and I had a supernatural note. It's, it's like something dropped. It, it, I felt like a piggy bank and a coin was dropped from my head. I just knew that the church was to start 11, 11, 12. I just knew that. But, you know, coming from my background with Winner's Chapel, when Bishop says he was in an 18-hour vision, ha, I thought, God, like, this church, is it going to be as great? This one that you didn't give me a vision, let me, I want my body to be vibrating for four days. But thank God, I learned better. Let me tell you something. Are you ready for this? Sometimes, God gives some people spectacular encounters because they are weak in faith. I'm not saying that's what happened to Bishop. Please. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm saying sometimes. Come on, are you listening to me? The closer you are to someone, the less explicit the person has to be when the person is communicating. You can understand the person's signals, the person's wink, the person's facial expression, the person's demeanor. You just understand that. The reason why Peter needed to see a trance three times is because he was in unbelief. God already said, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't need a trance for him to know that he could preach to Cornelius. All the theatrics happened because he was in unbelief. Come on, are you with me? Because if he was ready to obey the word of God as against obeying tradition. The people from Cornelius' house knocking at the door and saying, oh, we would like to host you for a bit. That should have been enough. But God had to not only speak to Cornelius, he had to also persuade Peter. After seeing a trance three times, when he woke up, God still had to speak to him and said, those people at the door, follow them. So the fact that someone had it more spectacular doesn't even make the person more spiritual than you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, the Bible tells us a very interesting story in 1 Kings chapter 19 of how the Lord God spoke to Elijah in one instance. He was on the mountain waiting to hear from the Lord. Eli um, 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 11. The Bible says, and he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. The Lord did what? It says, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rock in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Everybody say that with me. Say, the Lord was not in the wind. Say it again. Say, the Lord was not in the wind. See, I'm making you repeat this because some of us are so used to seeing God in the spectacular. But it says, God was not in the wind. Oh, Mataka Parates. Come on, are you with me? God was not in the wind. He didn't stop there. He says, and after the wind, an earthquake. Right after the wind, there was an earthquake. But what did he say next? But God was not in the earthquake. Don't let my making you repeat it piss you off. Say that with me. Say God was not in the earthquake. We in the 
spectacular. Earthquake is spectacular, but God was not in it. And after the earthquake, a fire, but God was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Many of you, God has spoken to you many times. You've despised it. You've despised it. Because it's not spectacular, you think it was not deep enough. And in pursuing the spectacular, we have many times missed the supernatural. Don't be that guy. Let me tell you three reasons why you should even be cautious of the spectacular. Or why you should not limit the leading of God to the spectacular. Number one, visions are not infallible. Are you with me? Visions are not infallible. You know, the Bible says, even about prophecy, it says that when one person prophesies, others should judge. There should be two judging. Meaning it is by the word of God that we even know what prophecy to receive. Just because someone had a spectacular encounter, claimed they saw something, doesn't mean that it's from God. Sometimes you simply ate too much and slept and saw things. It must be judged. And so visions are not infallible. If you are too driven by the spectacular, you will miss it many times, I'm telling you. Just because someone had a dream about you doesn't mean it's of God. Are you with me? Uh -huh. You know, I received a call weeks ago from someone I love very much, so I'm not saying this to castigate her, but she's my student, so I'm teaching you <laughs> from my experience. And she said, she first started, I, I woke up to a text saying, Sir, I'm sorry to bother you. The Lord said I should tell you something. So, and let, let me just say this. Many of you have been instrumental to giving me confirmations in this church. But if you're going to come to me, come correct. Come correct. Don't just bring one Akamu vision. I, I, I'm, listen, I can receive a, a word, but I, I'm your trainer, I'm your pastor. Hallelujah. You know, and so she said, so I was like, oh, okay. So I called her, and she first started by talking about how, you know, one time she had a dream, and then this terrible thing happened. That's how she started. I have a lot to teach. I wish I had more time. <laughs> you all be judgmental in this church, you know. Listen. If it's the word of God, even if it is a correction, it won't inspire fear. It won't inspire hopelessness. Uh, that's very important. So even the way she started was suspect that she had a dream, this bad thing happened, and it happened. Then she said, I had this dream about you, sir, and this and this happened. You know, this, this was a while ago. You know, this and this. She was about to say what will happen. So she, she was reluctant. So I now said, you know what, well, listen, if the Lord gives a vision about something bad, it's because he's giving us ample time to prepare to advert it. You know, so I was telling her that. And she said, sir, the troubling thing is there's nothing that can be done about it to happen. I said, I said, if, I said in fact, don't bother saying it. <laughs> I said, don't bother saying it. So now... You had a dream that something bad will happen. And it's inevitable. From the Lord. And then when I said, okay, you know what, don't bother saying it. She said, the thing is, God said I must tell you. I said, no. <laughs> Imagine, God said you must tell me something bad that will happen that I can't do anything about. That's not true. Check the Bible. When the man of God received the prophecy, he faced the wall and said, only the living can praise you as I do this day. You know, God told the prophet, turn back. That's the God of the Bible. So if you're not trained, someone will just give you one, you will lose your sleep. You will... <laughs> 
Hallelujah. And at the same time, spirituality doesn't mean you are so scared. In this world, you have tribulations. Are you aware? And so we are not using this, this divine leading thing, as a measure to control our fear. We don't walk in fear. Come on, are you with me? We don't walk in fear. Visions are not infallible. Number two, visions can be fabricated. Listen, many people have made millions of dollars off the church because of our idolizing of spectacular stories and encounters. Anybody will just wake up and say, ah, I went to hell. And people who know nothing about eschatology, know nothing about the scriptures, will just buy the story. There was a young boy who claimed to have gone to heaven the story was suspect to me because they made it. There was a movie adaptation and he talked about one scene where he was telling the angels to sing for him. And the angels were singing. So he now said, okay, sing this song. We, 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 we rock you. I said, so I'm just like, this thing is typical of a five-year-old. Wait, oh, you know? I just, I just brushed it off. Me, generally, I don't want to say something you will misunderstand. I don't learn about God from movies, generally, me. If I'm watching movies, cruise, it's vibes. If I want to learn about God, I read Bible. <laughs> me, me, personally. Just as well, I was just watching with a pinch of salt, like, ah, that's cute. Now, years later, the boy came out to say, he's sorry, he didn't go anywhere. That his parents told him all those things and some of them he just added his imagination now the thing is you've already made millions of dollars from book sales is that the strategy now you just say you went to heaven make money then repent <laughs> is there repentance without restitution you know who will return my money <laughs> you know and but some church people are so gullible listen and that's why I said, you, oh my God, I'm coming to that. You know, have you read the story of the rich man and Lazarus? When the rich man was in Hades, he said, please send someone from here to go and warn my brother so that they won't come here. You know what God said? You know what, you know what Abraham said? He says, they have Moses and the prophets. They have the scriptures. If they will not read their Bible, if they will not hear the scriptures, neither will they hear anyone from here. That's God's opinion on this. So if anyone says God sent them from hell or from heaven, it means God is not the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, one way to know someone really went to heaven is even to say it, they'll be reluctant. Paul says there was a man caught up in the third heavens, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot say. He was using coded language. Because anyone who is truly spiritual will want the faith of people to be vested on the word of God and not on experiences. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is important. They will come and lie to you. I saw this woman of God in hell uh, because she used Jericho. Because rubbish. Rubbish. I saw a long line. The long line was leading to hell. I saw a short line. The short line was leading. No, in fact, there was no line. I just saw... Once every two days, one, someone will just throw. <laughs> so me, Nigerian, I see the way to heaven. I'm now on a line. Q. Eh? <laughs> you, that last man is trying to control. You suddenly be, be started behaving on the way to hell. What do you me? What do you <laughs> it can be fabricated. You know, there was a woman who went to hellfire and said, went to hellfire, went to heaven, and said, God told her that Bishop Oedipo has missed it, Pastor Adibu has missed it, all the generals have missed it. You know, so there's a popular geo in this country that had always had beef for those men of God and said, You see, I've been saying it. Invited the woman to their church. 
no, not invited, they played the video in their church. They didn't know that the woman will have part two. <laughs> so in part two of the vision, she went to heaven again. God now told her that this man of God too is not. So the man of God was now trying to do damage control and say, in fact, she's, she's not of God. No, she's of God. She's of God. <laughs> she's not of God since when she's of God. <laughs> Please read your Bible, okay? <laughs> you know the scary part? I'm not even saying you didn't see a vision. I'm saying it's not God. <laughs> I'm saying it's not God. Are you in church? Yes. Number one, visions are not infallible. Number two, they can be fabricated by even humans. Number three, the devil can mimic that. Simple things like an inward weakness, the devil cannot mimic it. The devil can't mimic that. Because when the spirit bears witness with your spirit, that's something internal. Something internal. Something internal. Listen, if the spirit is inside you, he need not speak from outside. If the spirit is inside you, a nudge will be enough. enough. And so that nudge is more powerful than any spectacular encounter. You see, the reason why Moses needed a bush to be on fire is because he was a man of the senses. That's why. Don't despise the nudge of God. That nudge. Even if it's just a simple nudge, pray today. Pray. Spend more time praying. Study. Talk to that person about me. Forgive. Are you listening to me? For some of you, it is that nudge that brought you here to this church. And you are still thinking, ah, God doesn't speak to me. Oh, you're wrong, bro. You just, you, you have just idolized the spectacular leadings. Hallelujah. So we must get back to the primary ways, simple ways that God leads. So the title of this sermon is How God Leads. How God Leads. You know, and I want to just give you a fundamental framework. When it comes to the leading of God, it doesn't matter how deep you are in the things of God, how long you've, you've been speaking in tongues, and how many visions you've seen. God's primary instrument of guidance is His Word. Say loud, amen. amen. It's His Word. You're going to have to be a student of the Word. It is the Word in the first place that will be your, a protection from deception when it comes to spectacular encounters. It's the Word that is your instrument for, for judging which voice is from God and which voice is from your full stomach. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Say loud, amen. amen. Say with me, your word, your word. is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. What is saying in essence is the word of God is an instrument for direction. With the word of God, I have direction on where to go, how to live my life. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. If you study your Bible, many of the things you are praying about, you won't pray about again. Because it's all there. You're single. You're in love with someone who does not know the Lord. And you're praying for the will of God. This is the will of God. I'm telling you now. No. <laughs> That's the will of God. It's, so, and that's why we did some preliminary trainings. Sometimes it is very futile to teach people on hearing God's voice and all these things. Because if primarily you don't even know what it means to align and incline your heart to the word of God, even if God speaks to you, you won't hear. You know, one very instructive video, I don't know if you've seen it, this video memes, Christian video memes, a lady was saying, God, speak to me if I'm in the wrong relationship. And then 
someone, of, of course, who was act, playing the role of an angel, hit her head with fry pan. Bam! Very loud, though. God, I can't hear anything. Speak to me. Bam! And that happened four times. And I said, God doesn't lead me. Uh-uh. You are in love. That's why it's so clear. Everybody, do you know when you are already set in your ways? Have you, have you seen someone who is in love with the wrong person? All you and your friends will be telling the person, guy, this bit, now nah, your money she wants. Or this guy doesn't really care about you. He's a player. Oh. And somehow, the person doesn't listen. Haven't you witnessed that? Leading is so hard when you, you, I mean, you have refused to see. And that's what the word of God does. It corrects us. It gives us, you know, how to act, how to behave. It even predisposes us better to spectacular encounters. You know what James said? He says, you ask and you don't receive. Because you ask and miss. That you may consume it upon your lusts. Meaning if your motives are wrong, you will never hear God. You will never hear God. And from Abraham, it had been prophesied that there will be a Messiah. The whole Old Testament was littered with prophecies about the Messiah. The Messiah comes. And these Pharisees who have rejected the word of God in the first place are telling him, if you are the Messiah, show us with a sign. That's where you will know, let me tell you something. For some people, their prayer for direction annoys God. I know it sounds ironic, but it's true. But if you are not a person of simple obedience to the word of God, your prayer for direction is an expression of rebellion. is a reflection of hard-heartedness. I want to show it to you. Look at Matthew chapter 12, from verse 38. Teach us, teach us, show us a sign that you are from heaven. And Jesus responded, wicked and adulterous generation. No sign shall be given to you except from the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, so shall the son of man. So, what happened to Jonah prefigured the death of Jesus and his rise. So in other words, Jesus was saying, if you want a sign, read your Bible. Someone said this, and it might be dramatic, but I mean, it's actually very instructive. He said, if you want to hear God, read your Bible out loud. And of course, the word of God, I mean, the Bible has to be properly interpreted for you to get the word of God. But it just tells you, God's word is in there. When you believe in the final authority of the scriptures, you believe that what God says is what his word says. Any angel or spirit that speaks to you and it does not align with the word of God, that's not God. Even if he says, he, even if he says I am, <laughs> he will never contradict his word. Come on, are you listening to this? We must become word people. We must honor the word of God above all else. Are you with me? Now, this second way that I'm about to teach you or talk to you about, every believer has it. And this way that God leads, it outclasses any other leading you read about in the Old Testament. Moses' burning bush, you know, all the visions, you know, even the types of Christ that they saw, you know, and all of that, all those angelic encounters, it outclasses all of them. There is one type of leading that only believers can have. You don't have, a, you don't have to be born again to see an angel. You don't have to be born again to have a trance. Cornelius was not born again when he saw an angel, at least at the time. But there is a type of leading that only believers have. Are you ready to know what type it is? Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 from verse 13. It says, if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Now, that structure construction might be misleading. What he's actually saying is this. 
as many as are the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. That's what he's actually saying. Because you are a child of God, you are led by the Spirit of God. He's not telling you what to do to be a son of God. He's telling you what you have because you are a son. Do you understand what I'm saying? And now what did he say? What kind of leading is he talking about? The fact that by the Holy Spirit, the sinful cravings of the flesh are no more irresistible. That you can, by the Spirit, put to death the sinful cravings of the body. That since you believed, now, every time you have the temptation to beat someone up, self-control. Every time you have the temptation to lie, self-control. To steal, self-control. That's a leading. Come on, are you with me? That's a leading. It might be a moral leading, but it is a leading. Uh, listen, you know what I'm helping you do? If you don't appreciate the small manifestations of God in your life, you won't see the spectacular ones. So here you are saying, oh, I wish God would just lead me. And he leads you every day, every day by his spirit to say yes to his will and no to the sinful cra cravings of the flesh. You need to start celebrating that. Because that's not ordinary. Come on, are you with me? It's it is the power of the Holy Spirit at work in you. He said, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. He says, there shall no more anyone teach his neighbor saying, know the Lord. The fact that you wake up in the morning and you know enough to pray. You know enough to study without super supervision, without force. That's a leading. So the fact that you are still trusting for the leadings to become more specific, you want to start hearing names and addresses. Start appreciating the manifestations of God you already see in your life. Amen, someone? Yes. How many of you have been led to overcome temptation before? That's powerful. That's power. That's power. Galatians chapter 4. Chapter 5, I beg your pardon. From verse 16 to 18. I'm just rushing because of time. Galatians chapter 5, because I don't know. This clock is just running. What have I said? <laughs> Galatians chapter 5, from verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another, that you, should, you cannot do the things that you wish. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit. So now that's a leading. You're not obeying the promptings of the flesh, obeying the Spirit instead. It's a leading. Some of you think the Holy Spirit only leads you. Okay, go to Abiyakuta. Okay, stay in Ibadan. Those are actually minor. The biggest leadings are the leadings that help you walk in a way that is consistent with God's plan in his Christ. Especially on the lanes of sanctification. That's powerful. Come on, do you have that in your life or not? So now, as we come to the more practical ones, or more practical ways, I came up with an acronym that will help you never forget. Price. P-R-I-C-E. Price. How I can descend the leading of God with price, P-R-I-C-E. P stands for persuasions. 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 R stands for restrictions. I stands for ideas and passions. And E stands for, no, C stands for confirmations. And E stands for ease. So the first, persuasions. You know, many times, you see in the Bible, Jesus is talking to people and you, you see, the Bible says, and Jesus knew their thoughts. Paul will say, I perceive. What's he talking about? In the natural senses, you perceive with your nose. 
But he's talking about something with your spirit. You just sense it. Have you ever just sensed something is wrong? Have you ever sensed that before? It, it, listen, you didn't hear a voice. Nobody told you anything. But you just, and it wasn't as if there were any real convincing um, physical cues. You just, there was something strong in your spirit saying, ah, I just know. I just know. I can't really place my fingers on it, but I know. I know. I know. Have you ever, you know, just had a strong push to do something? You know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life now. That's what I'm talking about. Persuasions. Say with me, say persuasions. persuasions. Hallelujah. Look at Acts chapter 14 from verse 8 to 9. I'm going to read as fast as possible. Acts chapter 14 from verse 8 to 9. It says, And there sat a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. How do you perceive that? It's a spiritual perception. You just know. So watch out for that. Amen, somebody. Watch out for it. It's, it's an impression in your spirit. Number two, restrictions. If you're a believer, you know this one. For some reason, maybe something you even should be excited about, you just, you just have a restraint. I'm not talking about your general procrastination. No. <laughs> Say, ah, but take your soap. <laughs> you know, for some reason, it's just a restraint. Someone that everybody is finicky about, for some reason, you just know this person, no. Oh, this person, there's something. This person is not to be trusted. For some reason, you just know, I shouldn't travel to this place. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. A restraint. A restraint. So the same God who said, go into the world, all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Now, Paul is about to go to Asia, and the Bible says he was restrained by the Spirit. How can the Spirit restrain you from preaching? He was restrained. And then he now saw a vision. People in Macedonia saying, come to us. You know, this is how the Lord leads. Restraint. Come on, are you with me? The restraints. Watch out for that. Watch out for that. When you're picking your friends, after you have done all your due diligence, you have picked based on, you know, common interests. Ah, you're a Liverpool, you're a Liverpool fan. Me too. You studied accounting. Me too. Watch out for restraints. Many people have ignored the restraints of the spirit much to their peril. Don't ignore it. Let me tell you something. Even if you can't explain it, don't ignore it. Did you hear what I said? Even if you can't explain it, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Some Christians go the extra mile and do silly things, unnecessary things. Have you seen Christians who will message someone and say, you know, I have a nudge that your mommy is a witch. Have you seen? Have you heard? Have you, why is it? Ah, you've not heard of such. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? First and foremost, <laughs> it's because a lot of Christians have not been taught on authority. Okay, if she's, if she's a witch and so, come on, are you with me? So what? Now, there is also the practical side. I've been in this for a long time. How many of you know that witches exist? Raise your hand. Okay. But do you know of the hands that are raised? If someone you say your uncle is your uncle, or someone close, you say, why? You, you might be annoyed. You are comfortable with the fact that it might be someone's mom. <laughs> Conversation for another day. So there is that too. 
So except where extremely necessary. You don't do that. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have more to say on that, but I will just... So watch out for restrictions. Say restrictions. Uh -huh. If the Lord says, don't marry that guy, don't. Don't do business with that. That person might be a church person. No? Don't do business with her or with him. Don't. All right? The third, ideas and passions. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. Somehow, there is a pattern in the Bible that you see. When God, <laughs> let me teach you this way. The word of God is not like the word of men. When a man speaks to you, his advice. But when God speaks to you, something enters you. Something that puts in you what is consistent with that word that you are supposed to fulfill. It sets you up on your feet. It makes you go. So as a Christian who follows the Spirit of God, your passions can no longer be ignored. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not saying that inevitably because there are Christians who walk in the flesh. I'm not saying anything you're passionate about like Liverpool. You know, it's God's word to you, you know. But I'm saying it can no more be ignored. Especially if it's something that was not on your mind out of nowhere. You just find this thought overwhelming you. You are just passionate about something. Even if God has not categorically spoken to you yet, I am telling you, chances are, it is a pointer to your destiny. So before Moses had a burning bush experience, he already couldn't stand the oppression of the Israelites. Remember? When he saw that soldier, he couldn't take it. He was wrong. He did it in the flesh. He killed the guy that was wrong, made him a fugitive. But that was a reflection of his destiny. You know what the Bible says? Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Open it quickly. Open it as fast as you can. Listen, this is very simple and very powerful. Look at the screen. Read it together. One, two, go. Listen, that's discernment there. Maybe you didn't know it is God. He's telling you, it is God. Are you with me? He's explaining a phenomenon you've been experiencing that you didn't know what it was about. It, it's not your mind. It is God who walks in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God. It is God. So, as a believer... Your passions can no longer be ignored. When you hear something, it might be something everyone hears. And somehow everyone is cool with it, but it touches you deeply. And you have, some of you, as I'm talking now, this is a confirmation to you. And you have like an overwhelming sense of responsibility as if you must do something about it. The wall of Jerusalem was destroyed. Everybody heard about it. Nobody said anything. But Nehemiah heard his countenance changed. He wasn't the same again. Even his boss noticed. He came to work feeling, feeling down. The boss said, what is the matter? And he just said, sir, I can't take this. This wall is like this. You know, he just had a compelling dream. Are you aware Nehemiah never heard from God to do anything about the world? But are you aware that it was his divine assignment to do something about it? This is how God leads. Some of you, you have a stereotypical perspective of how God leads. He must speak to you with a voice. He must tap you when you're sleeping. He must, you know, but sometimes he just puts a passion in you. Come on, are you with me? He just puts a passion. Nehemiah couldn't take it. And every step he took in the direction of that passion, 
he was taken in the direction of the leading of God. Are you getting it now? It is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So how do I know when it's just my normal human passion or if it is a supernatural passion? Three simple ways. Are you ready? Three simple ways. Number one, which is the most important, when you pray, instead of it reducing, it increases. When you pray, even instead of it reducing, it what? So listen, if it is your flesh, the more you pray, the more it will subside. But if it is the spirit, when you pray about it, it will get hotter. It will get hotter. All right? Number two is love. Investigate the motives. Investigate the motives. If it is, for instance, Nehemiah had a secure job in the palace. If you are having a passion to go and build wall, it must be God. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? You, if your passion is to walk in Chevron, maybe, <laughs> and you're allowed to have your natural passion, so, do you understand? You're allowed to have a compelling dream to improve your life, you know, to advance your cause, you know, maybe to travel to a better country or whatever. But I'm saying if it is from God, oh, you know that, I mean, it, it, it's, it doesn't necessarily add up financially. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. You know, I was just laughing to someone yesterday. I said, Apostolic visit Ilori, we spent 10 million. And I'm just thinking, you know, I, I don't think we took offering. We didn't take offering. See, the next time anybody should just tweet and say, hey, when is CCI coming to? <laughs> As you are saying, you just squeeze 30 M in my hand. Otherwise, don't talk to me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, we, many of the things, so when the Lord leads you like that, and it's something selfless, when Peter stands up and preaches in Acts chapter 2, his life is at risk. It's not because he thought he was going to be popular for it. It was a selfless thing to do. If it is God, it will be traced to a deep-seated selflessness. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. I think I will share the third one later for time's sake. The third, the fourth, confirmations, right? I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But as it happened to you that you were already dealing with something in your heart, maybe God is speaking to you about something, and it's almost as if everywhere you go, all the sermons you hear will be on that thing. You will enter the bookshelf, you will see, the book, a book on that topic. Um, you're just talking to a friend, and the friend will just bring up that topic. That's God. You know, something happened to me three months ago. There was someone, you know, who I was supposed to do something with. And I wasn't sure about it. So I was praying about it. I just wanted to know. I wasn't sure about it. Like I had questions maybe on the person's character, but I wasn't sure. I couldn't place my finger on it. Then I went somewhere, somewhere I wasn't even meant to go. I met an old friend and we were just talking and somehow he just brought up that guy and said 10 years ago, he did this similar thing I had a concern with. He did this and it went south. I said, hey. You know, and when the person is confirming to you, it looks natural to the person. The person doesn't even know that he's confirming something supernatural. But in your mind, your body is shaking. That, hey. That, hey. That's so God save me. Eh? Tell me more. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? Maybe your friend just says, ah. There's this guy that has been liking me. Oh, look at his picture. And he just shows you your boyfriend. <laughs> 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 
That's confirmation. <laughs> and you say, since when have you been dating? For like six months now. Aha! Wrong, no. Simple, powerful ways God speaks to us. And then, ease, right? What did I call it? Now, this one, there is no hard and fast rule. Because some people now, <laughs> sorry, ease doesn't mean easy. You. Did you hear what I just said? I said ease, not easy. Because if you are following the will of God, supposedly, and you look for what is easy, ah, go to Canada now. <laughs> Straight up. But what I'm saying is, even if it is something difficult, there will be ease in your spirit. You just know. You have had your Gethsemane experience, and you are ready. All these things are, are they, they, there, is, there is a litmus test for all these things, prayer. Even if you don't want to go to the cross, after you pray, you will know, let's go. It might be hard, but there will be ease. Some of you know what I'm saying. This is the way. You know that's the way. Many have missed out on God because they don't know all these things I'm teaching. Let me say this. The first time I preached on this, I preached on it, and it's so powerful. When God wanted to make David king, did God just send a prophet to take him straight to the palace? That's not what God did. Did God just say, Oh yeah, David, come. And just carry David like this. Oh, yeah, come. Oh yeah, Saul, stand up. Yeah. Oh yeah, you sit down. Sit down, my son. Don't mind him. Saul, go home. Is, is that what happened? Listen, this will change your life. Are you ready? What did God do? He sent a prophet to David's house. The prophet anointed David and went home. <laughs> hey, this God. I'm about to explain some things that have been happening in your life that you didn't understand. I said the prophet did what? Anointed David and went home. So what did that anointing do? It put in him a passion. Something that other people didn't have. Goliath had been bragging for days. No soldier had the nerve to challenge him. But David heard Goliath and he couldn't take it. That's the anointing at work. Sometimes, the way God leads us is with supernatural passion. That's what I'm telling you. Supernatural passion. What everybody has been hearing touches you in a different way. Everybody is already used to driving in Lagos, seeing children hawking. But when you see children, your heart bleeds. And you don't understand why. Trace it. Your death, if you follow the crumbs, you will arrive at God's plan for your life. Are you aware that God did not tell David to fight Goliath? Are you aware? God did not tell David to fight Goliath. And that's where many of you are missing it. You are still, see, first and foremost, this is the problem you have. This is why you are still single. You know they understand Q. Allow me to talk, please. <laughs> That's why you're still single. You know the other thank you. The same thing your crush is complaining about, God is complaining about. That he has been giving you sign. <laughs> I'll be giving you sign. That's the same way God too. He's putting all these signals around you. He's still saying, God, lead me. God, follow your passion. That divine passion. Because the anointing produces something that will not allow you look at Goliath and turn your back. It will push you towards challenges. Challenges that you are well equipped for. And as you conquer them, guess what? That's where your promotion will happen. And that's where that plan of God that you have been praying for will now be executed. That's where it all starts. Just by a supernatural passion. Don't ignore it. God is spirit. His communication is different. His communication is multifaceted. 
for us, we have to say, eh, hey, come for you to, for you before you come. But he, he can just put in you a nudge, something, something, something. So when you pray, start getting conscious of that nudge. Start getting conscious. Some of you, coincidences, which is part of confirmation, will start happening. You will just find someone, you know, that knows something about it, or someone who has been to the place before and is giving you unsolicited advice. Or there will just be an opportunity, an opening, which is part of the ease I'm talking about. So don't you say God has not spoken because he did not practically, actually say. It is my prayer for you that in this month, clarity has come to you. Yeah. Come on, I said clarity has come to you. Yeah. In any way you have been facing a dilemma, clarity has come to you. You will know the when, the how, and the with who in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I want you to stand to your feet and just speak in tongues right now. Speak in tongues right now. Speak in tongues right now. Speak in tongues. Do it louder. You walk in clarity. No confusion. No confusion. You walk in clarity. Clarity by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Supernatural persuasion and perception. Supernatural restrictions. Supernatural ideas and passions. Supernatural confirmations. Supernatural ease. Supernatural ease. Supernatural ease. Supernatural ease. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Supernatural ease. Thank you, Lord. Supernatural ease. Supernatural ease. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. One prayer. Every wasted years, I am recovering by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. God, according to your calendar, where ought I be? What ought I be doing? By your mercy, let there be a recovery. Let there be speed in the mighty name of Jesus until I am where you have destined for me to be. Recovery. Sotaka balando re bahaya sinamanda kaindo koponde kepo sunamano kuriaka si alamano vineke sinamano kuneke Kuputi Venebo, 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 keep a higher. Think a movie, the Gino Kubiti, Sibidigi, Subine, yeah, Anani Anakana, Kuba Kano, Putipiniki, Pop, Kate.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Listen, there is someone here. I just saw a vision of you walking out of a grave. And the Lord says, for the past seven years, six and a half, you have been in the same spots. The person I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying. In the same spots. In the same spot. But by the grace and the mercy of God, you are coming out. You have come out. You have come out. Help me lay hands on them. You have come out. By the anointing of the Spirit, I said you've come out. And every embargo on your life is lifted by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I said I lift it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Listen, I've told you this is a sensitive month. Add some fasting to it. Add some fasting. Direction is not cheap. It's, listen, don't think the devil will just stand and watch as your life is changing and improving. Fast. Pray. Take it seriously. There must be a seriousness in your approach. Zokapala. Bondere menengo sepele kuriakai. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want to give just 20 more seconds. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues some more. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Kai. Kai nainga song de bo, yeah. Tapaya, poteke menekos, and tongri sapai, kore teke paya, and sopoya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will say this codedly. I have more clarity than I'm revealing. I separate you from the errors of your father. And in any way, your family has dabbled into dark magic and charms and has made covenants on your generation's behalf. I separate you from the consequences. I separate you from the influence. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm just, there's a, there, I'm saying this because there's, there's, there's a man here under the sound of my voice. You, 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 you are from the east. And I'm saying that your dad had some covenants with the water. But I separate you from the consequences. Listen, this is why you have had so much problem in your family regarding marriage. Regarding marriage. But that siege is broken today. In the name of Jesus. It's broken now. You are free. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Give Jesus a shout! Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated quickly. We take a few announcements. A pie. Ombro take a pay. Hallelujah. We're also going to give a lot of time, you know, ample time to prayer, midweek service. I know you islanders, you don't like to cross the ocean. It's as if if you cross the ocean, you are in another country. You will cross for Jesus. Amen? Amen. So midweek service holds in Yaba. Please get the address. Ah. Uh. Okay. 
All right. Please get the address and find your way there, okay? Midweek service holds in Yaba. Um, if you can, be there. We're going to have pr- special things happen. Online is powerful, but it's not the same. Come on, are you with me? Uh-huh. So just try to be there this season. When people are trying to tap into dark energy and powers, see all they go through, then you as a believer, just to get direction, you are in a sensitive season in your life. Let me tell you something. The average demography in this church is in the most sensitive season in his or her life. A season where you are making career choices, marital choices, where you are coming to, to define your personality. The consequences of this age will be with you for decades. Don't play. Nobody should be begging you to pray and to fast. Please, are you listening to me? Take this season. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. I know you have a good degree. In all you're getting, please pray. Hallelujah. And so, it's going to be crescendo, like I said. Prayer time and more teaching on Wednesday. And then on Sunday, we're here for a power pack service. The teaching is on, you know, prayer, direction through prayer. And we'll be having, for those of you who came late, I wonder why you came late, but anyway, we'll be having Pastor Nathaniel Bassi here. So, um, get ready for an amazing time. All right. Um, Please package your offerings. Package your offerings. I want to make an appeal to you. If you've been in this church for a while, you've been in this church long enough to know that our motives are on the assignment. And we would only ask because we want you to be a part of what God is doing. New branches on the way. Amen, someone. Amen. Um, so I'm going to need you to partner with us for the rent of this place. Apart from your regular giving, I want you to, for, for some of you, if you can, whatever you already plan to do, sacrificially, if you can afford to, double it. Double it. Just take a step of faith, you know. Double it. And if you already plan to give something, you know, for the rent of this place, there are two accounts. There's a rent account and then there's an offering account. Please do that. By the grace of God, I lead by example. And many of the things, you know, I ask you to do, I do also. I was, I was one of the top givers for, the, for that building gifts. I was. I was, you know, and it is my pleasure and privilege. So I, I want you to just understand and let's, let's all do this work together. The burden is lighter when we are all equally participating. Praise the Lord. In Celebration Church, because we are mission-minded, it has a special importance that you tithe. It has a special importance. Let me tell you something. If you are a regular partner, there is no way that the blessings of people in Ilori will not touch you. It's not possible. Because it's your gift that made it happen. Do you realize that? What, do, what does it look like being a member of this church and seeing all that God is doing through you by your contribution? All the new churches. It's a special thing. I want you to, you know, be proud. Be proud. You know, people brag different. Some people brag with their cars. Some people brag with their houses. For you, you brag with souls. Hallelujah. When you see all the people that God has used you and your church to reach by your donations, that's powerful. That's powerful. Praise the Lord. If you're giving your tithe today or you gave it last week, please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I just want to lead you in a, in, a, in a faith confession. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I honor you with the tenth of my income, recognizing you as my source. My job is just a vehicle. You are my true source. And so I honor you with the substance that in the first place you gave me. Partnering with my local church to bless even more people as I have been blessed, and I thank you that I'm replenished 
to abound even more generously. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right, please be seated. Let's all package our offerings. There is one of you who stood up. You have been expecting a promotion for the past two years that hasn't come. The Lord is asking me to tell you that he has created a new opportunity for you this year. He asked me to tell you that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If like me, you are giving online, you know, with, you know, with your phone, that's okay. Otherwise, there are envelopes on your seat. Please stand to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to give. We do this cheerfully and generously. Thank you because we are replenished to abound even more generously. We give so that your word will have free course, will run swiftly and be glorified, especially on the island of Lagos. In Jesus' mighty name, say loud amen, somebody. All right, welcome to choir as the minister. Apostle, and say, God bless you, Apostle. All right, you may please be seated as we take these announcements. So, like Pastor said, we're having midweek service at Yaba at the Yaba Branch Bunny Locks Event Center this this Wednesday. So make sure you cross over. Hallelujah. Make sure you plan and you come at, and come along with someone this Wednesday and also pray along. Hallelujah. Next week Sunday, like Pastor has mentioned, Pastor Nathaniel Basel will be with us. And then it's also going to be a special Children's Day service as well. So I know that the Children's Church are planning something. So if you have your kids, you didn't bring them to church, bring them next Sunday. I know they have something special planned for them. Hallelujah. 
Don't forget all the platforms we have created for you. Triumph 30 devotion continues this evening and um, on, on Monday morning, 6 a.m., 12 noon, 8 p.m. All right, so make sure that you, are, you participate in every prayer time. And we have an instruction, do not miss two consecutive prayer times. Hallelujah. So make sure you participate in Triumph 30 Live. Download the app on your, on your Play Stores. Hallelujah. Also, if you would like to join a service unit, angels did not set up all of this. Hallelujah. So if you like to join a service unit or you like to join a MAP group, MAP is Meet and Pray. Meet and Pray is the self-fellowship structure of Celebration Church. If you like to join one, just go to the information desk towards where my hand is pointed and all the information you need is there. If you want to join a MAP group or you want to join a service unit, they will show you how to go about that. Hallelujah. Also, I want to reiterate um, an announcement we made about three weeks ago about our interest groups. So what we've, what we've done in Celebration Church for the Island Church, we've, we're piloting a system, um, a, an interest group system, and there are four of them. Number one, creatives. Number two, professional services. Number three, business. And number four, STEM. That's for those in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's so if your career your job or your interest are in any of these four areas. We have groups for that. So you do, there is no requirement for it. All you just need to do is join. You don't have to be a worker. You don't have to be anything. It's just an interest group to foster community amongst people of the same interest and of, this, of like-mindedness. Hallelujah. So if you'd like to join any of these interest groups, also you can go to the information desk. Also, there's a link on your screen right now. You can take out your phone and scan that barcode to take you to a link that you can register and then you'll be, you, you'll, be, um, you'll be sent to a platform on Telegram, a Telegram group for whatever group or interest group you have decided to join. Some interest groups are having meetings today. I know that business groups are having one today in, in, in church after service. So if you are part of the business, if you are part of the business um, interest groups, make sure that you stay behind for a brief meeting. Others are having in other places. Just go to the information desk after service to have more information about that. Hallelujah. Some people had their birthdays this week or today. If today is your birthday or during this week was your birthday, wave at me. Hallelujah. So we have Jerry Oputa, Amarachi Anya, Elsa Bankole, Apori Iosa. I see Kende also. Her birthday was this week. We love you. We celebrate you. Everyone shout a big happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. And then we have some special people in our midst today. If today was your first time in Celebration Church Island, wave at me. First time in Celebration Church Island. Hallelujah. A big welcome to you. Please rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Please celebrate them. Keep clapping for them. Even as they rise to their feet. excited to have you. We thank you for coming. We know that you have been blessed. There are people to your left and to your right. Please just take your Bibles, your belongings with you. Follow them. They have a special place prepared for you. They would just like to share a few more information with you and get to know you better. So please follow the people to your left or to your right and just go along with your things. Hallelujah. If you are a second timer, today is your second time in Celebration Church Island. Wave at me. Wave at me. Second time. Do we have any? Oh, okay. God bless you. Thank you for coming once again. After service, please just come to my left hand side here, just in front. And we'd like to say a brief word to you. Hallelujah. Also, we'd just like to announce that our information dex is also a lost but found dex. So if you are missing your wallet, your phone, or anything that maybe you misplaced or you forgot last week, please always check with the information dex. Most likely it would be if it would be with them if it was found. Hallelujah. What kind of week are we going to have? Come on, stand to your feet and prophesy into your week. Say, I am led by the Spirit of God this week. 
I am led continually in all my ways. I am led by the word of God and by the inner still voice of the spirit on my inside. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to take five more minutes of your time, please. I need a favor. So we're wrapping off the Ap Apostolos production, the Apostolos album production. There's, there is one of the tracks, um, the reaction um, voices was not really captured and it's very important, very, very important. So I want to crave your indulgence. We're going to play the song again and you're going to respond the way you responded that day. Now, the crowd at Reboot Camp was thrice this size, you know, so, but I, so I'm going to need you to project so that you can capture it. I want you to shout so much that when the song is out, you will hear your voice. That, ah, his eyes are now. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, so are you ready? Yeah. All right, are we ready? So it's the glory of God reveals. Remember that song? All right. We're not leading it live, oh. You will just assume I'm leading it, but they will play this song. Are we ready, media team? We're hearing you. Direct. I'll be here to direct. Hello there. We trust you had an amazing time in service today and we believe that the word of God blessed your hearts richly. As you go into this new week, we encourage you to be a doer of the word by applying yourself to everything that was taught today. Draw up action points and revise your notes. Please remember that our midweek service holds by 6 p.m. this Wednesday on our YouTube and Mixler platforms. We look forward to fellowshipping with you again. And as you go for this week, Please bear in mind that our purpose as believers is to know God and to make him known. Ensure to tell someone about Jesus. Have an amazing week. <laughs>